an urgent warning for, well, basically all investors, whether you're invested in crypto or stocks or whatever, you need to listen to this video. The situation over in Eastern Europe is really kicking off the new raft of sanctions coming in against Russia that could have far-reaching impacts on the global economy. In today's video, I'll be talking about that with you, as well as make sure to stick around till the end of the video, because I'm going to be sharing some interesting charts with you that tell us, well, just how long could all of this craziness last in the markets? My name's Lark. Every day I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. So if you'd like that top like stamp today with what's happening in crypto, a quick tap on the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm will be super freaking awesome. Now let's go ahead and get into this topic and boy, oh boy, things have been escalating. So Western countries have announced that they'll be cutting some Russian banks off of the SWIFT network. They've also announced sanctions on the Russian Central Bank. Massive implications for this. SWIFT is how uh, banks communicate with each other at a very basic level. So cutting Russia out of this, it makes it much more difficult for Russia to do business internationally. Now, it doesn't mean that Russia can't do business internationally. It just means it's a lot more difficult for them to do that. We may even see Russia pushing forward their own SWIFT network, which has been in development for some time. Perhaps they'll start working with China's SWIFT network equivalent also been uh, brewing in the background for a while. The long-term implications for dollar dominance if these things happen is a very interesting question that will be answered at a later time as we learn more about what's actually going on, but certainly something to start knocking around in your head. What is the long-term impact on all of this craziness for the dollar if we see a real reason, which now it seems we may have it, for these alternative swift networks to start rising up? Now, the sanctions on the central bank are a big damn deal because uh, it means that it makes it a lot harder for Russia's central bank to be able to support the ruble, which has been getting smashed, obviously. Um, and in retaliation for the central bank sanctions, this was announced earlier. Russian central bank has ordered market players to reject foreign client bids to sell Russian securities. That is a massive move because around 80% of Russian securities that trade on the Moscow Stock Exchange are owned either by foreigners or foreign-owned funds. So we're talking tens of billions, probably hundreds of billions of dollars worth of securities that are owned by foreign funds who are going to wake up tomorrow and find that those are essentially worth zero because they can't sell them. The impact of that, unwinding that, could be crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Now, maybe we'll see the market, uh, you know, other central banks stepping in, filling in the gap here, printing some more money. Maybe interest rates won't raise rise as fast as we thought they were going to. Maybe they're just going to print some more money. Maybe they're going to bring back in the uh, bond buying program in the U.S. We don't know. There's lots of uncertainty, obviously in what's going on right now. And as we know, markets do hate uncertainty, but that is a damn big move, of course, by the Russian Central Bank fighting back against all of the sanctions being leveled at them uh, due to what is going on right now in Ukraine. So big financial impact for this, because you got to remember, you got to remember, Russia is one of the world's biggest energy suppliers. They supply something like 15% of the world's oil, plus a massive amount of the world's natural gas, particularly to Europe. Europeans, in spite of all the conflict and stuff that's going on, they're still buying Russian natural gas. In fact, in the grand irony of all these things, that a Russian natural gas pipeline still going through Ukraine, still shipping out gas today from Russia through Ukraine into Europe. Politics of energy, man. It's some crazy, crazy stuff, without a doubt. Also, we had earlier today uh, the Russian president coming out and making some uh, posturing regarding Russia's nuclear capabilities, putting those forces on a heightened state of alert due to the ongoing tensions uh, revolving around 
what Western players are doing, uh, what's happening in Ukraine, and of course, Russia's response to all of these things. So the markets are very jittery as a result of all of these things coming together. What's going to happen to the energy markets? What does the, the sanctions mean for a variety of international companies and international funds? Security in Europe, all of this stuff. This is the exact kind of craziness and uncertainty that markets just absolutely hate. And they are showing that right now without a doubt. Doing a uh, poll over here on Twitter. Obviously highly scientific with 1,806 votes cast. So far, you can come over here, of course, and cast your vote on Twitter as well. So the question is, U.S. stocks, are they going to get smashed when they open up tomorrow due to all of this Russia situation? 44% of people say yes, hold on to your butts. The, uh, the real answer, of course, is don't care, stack and sats. That is the correct answer to this poll. But regardless, almost half the people think that, yeah, we're going to see some big volatility coming in for U.S. stocks tomorrow with all of this fear, all of this uncertainty uh, happening in the markets right now. And, of course, the heavy exposure of um, Russian securities markets to foreign investors, about half of the uh, Russian that for, half of that 80%, so 40% of uh, Russia's equities, uh, securities, they're owned by U.S. investors and U.S. funds. So what will that look like unwinding itself on the stock markets tomorrow? It's an unknown. It's an unknown, right? But we could be looking at some pretty big impacts. Only, of course, 20% of people think that, no, this is not going to be a big deal. Maybe the contrarians are correct. It won't be a big deal. We'll see the markets pump regardless because, you know, when markets are afraid, sometimes they just pump because that's what they need to do. By the way, just an interesting aside here from all of that stuff is that the Ukrainian government has actually started accepting cryptocurrency donations to aid in the war effort against uh, Russia, which is a fascinating thing. Now, look, I would just like to be clear. I'm a pacifist. I I don't want any war to be happening. I don't want the violence to be happening. I want this to end as soon as possible. You know, I'm praying for uh, as little life, loss of life as possible and for everything to just be over soon. That'd be great because I don't want, you know, a conflict happening between basically two of my favorite countries where, again, I have friends and family uh, on both sides here. So the sooner it ends, the better. But I would just like to, to comment here that This is crazy, man. This is modern warfare. You literally have a country saying, hey, if you'd like to help us in our war efforts, you can send us Bitcoin or Ethereum. That's crazy stuff, man. That's, you know, that's war in 2022. Nuts. Totally nuts. By the way, if you'd like to buy some Bitcoin, FTX US is a great place to do that. Super low fees in comparison to the competitors. Very available, of course, for Americans, but available for anybody uh, internationally as well. So use the link down below. You'll get 10% off of your trading fees when buying popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana over on FTX. Use first link in the description if you'd like to grab yourself some crypto on FTX. Now, Real quick, let's dive into some charts. Obviously, uh, market's down today. We did get another rejection after a nice little weekend of some green, made people feel good, but it's that kind of false hope that we keep getting in this market. Rejected off the 21-day exponential moving average, rejected off of the 50-day simple moving average. Those are, of course, the, the two lines we really need to cross back over in the short term to start even talking about a bull recovery in this market. We were rejected off of both of those lines, of course, after we saw some of this stuff coming out over the last day or so. Down the price goes once again. We did get over $40,000 for a few minutes over the weekend. That felt nice, but uh, here we go. Here we go again. Now, here's some interesting charts I wanted to share with you just in terms of thinking about, well, how long does all this last? You know, what, what's, uh, what's, what do we need to be paying attention to? Well, this chart here from Blake, if the stock market put its bottom in, I don't see a case for a deep Bitcoin capitulation full bear market. However, of course, we may not be in that situation if we see a big sell-off happening tomorrow because of all this stuff. But what I think is very, very interesting is, of course, the incredible level of correlation that we see between the stock markets and the cryptocurrency markets. So we can see here, 
We have the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, we have the S&P 500, and we have the NASDAQ. You can see all those basically move in unison with each other. And we also, of course, see Bitcoin moving right along with it. Look, we have price bottoms here for all the major equity markets. We had a price bottom for Bitcoin, right? We have price bottoms for all the equity markets. We have a price bottom for Bitcoin. Same over here, of course, uh, once again, price bottom for Bitcoin coming in, of course, a little bit before the equity markets this time, but we are seeing over time the correlation getting stronger and stronger. Right now, of course, we see equity markets going down, crypto following right along with it. So wherever equity markets stop bleeding, that is where Bitcoin and the wider cryptocurrency market is likely to stop bleeding because that correlation does remain very, very high. This is uh, from the guys over at Glassnode. So they're saying that the market takes 47 days on average to recover after an armed conflict. Again, talking about the strong correlation between uh, the S&P 500 and Bitcoin, showing that they will recover together. If, of course, we see more sell-off, we'll see the recovery coming in with those as well. So really, our fate in crypto is tied to these global macroeconomic events. What happens to the price of oil? What happens to the Russian securities market and the foreign exposure to that? What happens to a lot of things when it comes to the stock markets that is determining our fate right now in the crypto markets, unfortunately. I wish we didn't correlate so much, but we do. We do. Here's one more chart from Glassnode. Realized cap hot wave shows that the maturation of supply related to its stored USD value. So during past bear market cycles, six to 12 months supply peaked approximately halfway through the bear cycle. You can see here and here, approximately halfway through. We are now 90 days past the six to 12 month supply peak. So that would mean that we are now 90 days past the halfway point, essentially, if we you know, give a lot of weight to this particular chart and this particular uh, on-chain idea here, then we are now 90 days past the midpoint for this bearish cycle in the market. So that's some interesting, interesting food for thought here for you. Now, final point, obviously, for today. Can the markets go lower? Markets can always go lower, obviously. Does that change my investment thesis for crypto? No, no, I am accumulating. I think now is a great time to be accumulating. Now I'm not necessarily buying right at this minute. I'm waiting to watch, obviously, to see what happens when uh, the equity markets do open up tomorrow. If we get a deeper sell-off starting, will that great time to buy more, right? These kind of market events can create extreme fear and potentially extreme corrections. So, you know, don't be shocked if we see a day where we have 20, 30% downward price trajectory. That's possible if the fear gets enough, if the equity markets get hit hard enough. I'm not saying that's the most likely scenario. I'm just saying that's something that you can keep in mind as possibilities. Psychologically prepare yourself for this kind of stuff to potentially happen. Again, I will be a buyer. I've got a strong cash position. I've been talking about that for a while. Strong cash position ready to, of course, accumulate more on significant dip situations. Of course, I'm dollar cost averaging in here too. So I am buying more Bitcoin on a regular basis throughout this entire period. And if we get massive dips, huge red days where it's like, oh my gosh, everything's burning. What's happening? Buy. That's what I'm doing. Anyway, just my two Satoshis for the day. You'll let me know what you think about all this stuff down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching and peace out till next time.